All right, so hello world. Um, welcome back to another uh, build a form maker using Django. So um, let me just show you a demonstration of what we've been doing for these past six video, these tutorials. Maybe it's more like video since I don't have any plan, since so you can see like lots of bugs. And um, you can see, you can view submissions, and you can view each detail submissions, uh, you can create a form. By the way, every time I'm doing our freestyle, so every mistake that you will see is there, okay? And I didn't cut out any part of the blank. So the entire, if it's 30 minutes, maybe I make 20 minutes, bugs, mistake fixing, so you will see all that part because I hope this these tutorials or this video can show you a like, quote unquote real set of programming tutorials. All right. So we can create a new form, so like form name, so like sample form, and here we can just create a new question. So now what I want to do is, um, I want to be able to add the option where the user can create um, multiple choices, multiple choices. Um, so that's what I want to do, basically, multiple choices. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated this is going to be a little bit more complicated to create multiple choice. But I think once we have multiple choice, we have a short input. That's most likely, really, to be honest, that's really about it for like really simple form. So we'll take a look at that. And then we'll worry about deployment. And then that's maybe about it for this project. So we'll, let's take a look on how we can do it. So first of all, we need to change to change how this create a question work. So what I will do is I will go to uh, Bootstrap as that's the front end framework I'm using. So we'll search for a drop down, and now we we'll like to create a, like a drop down button. So like basically here you can create different options. So that's what I want to do. So I'm just gonna copy the code, and then paste it. Oops, maybe paste it here. All right, so now in here I can say create a new question. Whoops, shouldn't really do that. Shouldn't comment out this code rather. So I know when do I use this? Create a new question. All right, I'm just double check when is create a new question used. All right, only two places, good. All right, so in here I'm just gonna say create a new question. And in here, I can say hmm, short inputs, and this don't have an href, so this can just have an on click. Um, create new question, short input. Let's take a look. Would this work? I'm not sure would this work. Oh, this actually works. Okay, that's so that's neat. Short input. Hmm, nice. It works. Short input. Delete. Delete. Okay, it works. Um, and then here I'm just gonna say create new input question. So here I'm just gonna say create new input question. And another will be multiple choice. Multiple choice. So here I say on click create multiple choice question. Right, so let me go out, define a function. And then uh, this should be like that. And then let me worry about the front end for now. So question count, div, that's the attributes. Okay, all right. So then what I would do probably is creating Create something like that. So create something like this. Um, but let's see, what should we, how should we do it? So just in case, I'm just gonna copy the code. Of course, I can change a lot of stuff because it's involving actually multiple parts. Uh, because it's part involving, you, you also have different options, right? You don't, maybe not necessarily just four options. You can have two options, five options. So always, also you need to be able to add new options as well. 
So that's something that you need to do. So I was thinking maybe using fetch as an internal API to do that. Um, or some other ideas. Edit. So you can see it's a mess for me as well. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. Placeholder for answer text. Okay, of course, it's just going to be multiple choice. Uh, okay, so this is right here. Okay. All right. So this is not going to be input. Rather, this you know, multiple choice looks like. So then I have to go to forms. Mm, so how multiple choice works. So radio button basically are right here. All right, so radio button where you can check. All right, okay. Let's see, how can we do that? So multiple choice. So, okay, let's see. This is how it looks like, name. What's a name should be? That's a great question. Okay, well, the name I suppose is just going to be question count. And the ID is going to be question count. And the val value. That is great. 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 Oh, value. Okay, so what's the internal value is? Um, okay, we'll think about that as well. Obviously, we don't have checked as by default. Or is for this default radio. So that's yeah, sort of. Let me just see how would that look like. Multiple choice. Okay, nice. Okay. So you could do that. You do that different radio. So now we'll have different options here where they can add new option, right? Add and remove options. So I was thinking to do this just via a really like a simple API call to the back end so we can synchronize it. But that okay, so here's a structure as how I want it to be. Okay. So I think let me, okay, so this is just going to be a video with some max. Let me just start an online whiteboard, and I'm going to draw my ideas out using my little drawing pad as well. Okay, so here's my idea. So in the database, you will have these options, and you have a question, right? So again, this option is just going to associate with question. So and the, in the front end, you will have multiple choice, something like this, and you have a button, add option, remove option, delete question, right? So add option, what's, what this going to do is, what I want to do is just go out directly create via a internal API call. Where I can remove option, also via a API call, right? But these all depend on this question. And then you have this question ID created first. So still, we need to go ahead and implement some front end maybe. And that's maybe going to be a little bit easier. Now we have going to change a lot of back end infrastructure then, um, which I don't know what should we do for now. We will figure out eventually. Okay, so let's see. In here, we'll say function add multiple choice add choice. You're gonna take a name attribute. Also have function remove choice. So it's also gonna take a name attribute. 
let's see. Uh, we're going to copy, paste, paste. Right, let me just make a little bit more organized right here. Okay, so in here we'll just say add option or remove which option as well, right? We need to because this can remove like multiple options. Um. Well. Um, then what I will say say is this. Okay, then what I will say is this because I really want to have this multiple choice since that's like a little bit harder. And then so in mode so in here then what I can do is this. Um what I can do is have a button created so I don't really care about like how does it look right now, I just care about can I use it. So in here for each option, then what I would think is we'll add a new button. And when we unclick it, we're gonna say delete uh add delete option delete remove choice. How do you know what choice it is? Okay. So I need to know which remote choice it's calling from, right? Give this that up. Okay. Okay, just designing the front end is pretty complicated. And we also need to change how the form is submitted and you also. So here. Just a remove. Okay, so what I think it just changed the entire thing when I create a question is automatic synchronous with the back end. That's gonna be really a little bit easier, especially when I'm processing it. Okay, so for multiple choice question, when I create a question, we'll synchronize with the background. All right. And they will be able to change the option if they want to. And then keep calling. Okay. So backend, well. Okay, all right. Let me not worry about what happening in the front end. So here I also remove choice. I still need to know what name it is. Question. Pretty complicated to implement, actually. Hmm. Okay, remove choice. Well, how can I remove it? We'll think about that later. How to remove it? But here's just the thing. All right, let's talk about how to can we add. Add should be a little bit easier. So we can have uh add. add. No, remove choice. Add an option. So in here we just say add choice name. So then in here, say button primary not danger. Add choice, and in here we'll just say document. Dot get on by ID. I don't think how intelligent set up. Well, either way, uh, name. So this is just gonna be L. And then here it's just L. The append. The, let's just say var. 
new choice equals to documents dot create element actually that's just a div and then here's a div dot set attribute class form check dot inner HTML equals to Now I don't want to create a new div. Just want to create this. Oops. Okay, so today we'll work on create front end then. So create just how it display. So create this. How like so like we'll create this code basically. Be great if I can wrap them into another div. Let me take a look at that. How that look like? Oops. Yeah. Okay. Let me take a look how that look like. Let's check out the book choice. So much of other option. Okay, it didn't really do much change. So that's good. And maybe you enter this going to be changed to input. And then add an option. So here you can just say it's a div. Um, and then the inner HTML just gonna be whatever the least chunk of code is. Alright, let's back it up. Alright. So it should be question count. Shouldn't be question count. Name should be more than that. All right, we will just generate some random UUID where we can use to the back end, maybe. And then here is a sure I could not do that. Uh, uh okay. Also, need the option. I need to know how many options there are because how bootstrap do it is like they need to have their options and, and then we have like a ID collision then so like I don't want to get this element I want to get that element <sighs> let's just call this OPT then I will hope deeply if this would work. Do the other stuff for now. Just to so kind of create new elements. And then here is a the Doubt this is gonna work. Okay, so mm, describe it's kind of working. To be honest, it's not really working. Okay, they have same name, so that's good. Um. Okay, so because it didn't create within this. Um, okay, so I want to append. Yeah, I want to append this entire thing. Yeah, I want to append this entire thing. It's a form check, yeah. I want to append this one entire thing. So then here's the div, that's the attributes. Plus form check. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I just need to somehow move this down. Mm. 
Uh, why didn't okay pen after it? All right, well we have we're gonna have another like, entire dip. Where is this? Q list. I don't even know why I call this Q list. Question list. O list should be called option list. All right, let's see. Ah, okay, let's see. O list name. Alright, this we get it. Who knows what is this for? Alright, let's see. It's not that long. One, one, two. O lists. Okay, what's you? Question count. Okay, let's see. Switch choice, add an option. All right, there we go. Okay, so we can add different options. Um, all right, let's work on remove these choices as well. Yeah, let's work on remove these choices. To remove these choices, we can just say. Uh, okay, so we need, okay, so we need to somehow deal with the exact individual option, where right? you cannot just call them call OPT. So what I can do is I can create a global dictionary, so we're an object, and then here, it's going to map two things. It's going to have, um, it's going to have the question and the ID. Alright, so for example, I have something like count is number one. Option so far, we have one option. Maybe that's something we could do. Or not. Um, okay. Because I need to somehow know it's a previous number is okay option count let's just name it as option count so I don't know how this work out but initially when you create a multiple choice question and say option counts say brackets Bracket uh, question count equals to zero. Right, this is initially. Then once it's at choices, it's gonna say plus plus. And then here, word, then I can say option count. Bracket name. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we start counting at zero, right? So let's refresh and take a look what the ID looks like. See if it does. So no kind of like what? It, oh no. Oh okay, never mind. I forgot about it. Like I'm like, why it's doing that? Okay, let's see. 
So it's four zero comma zero since this is zero question. And there should be zero four. Zero three zero not a number. Okay, equals to option plus one. I don't think it should be basically the same thing. On an option, what's happening here? On the find. What's your name? What's your name? What's the name again? Typo trace. Mm, okay, so this zero hyphen zero, that's correct. Let me create another option. It says on the find here. Hmm. And choice, let's see. Add an option, okay. So it will go ahead and add an option. Question count. Is it because the sink is a strain? Because I have absolutely no clue why it says that. Why is it sound defined here? It still says undefined for some reason. It is zero, okay. So now it's not a number. Try option counts, take a look. Option count, question count, minus one. Zero hyphen zero, so this should be zero hyphen one. Oh no, it should be, no way. My brain is a mess right now. One second. Oh, okay. Maybe if I put it before this, would it work? I don't think so. Yeah, it still doesn't work. One second. So zero half and zero here. This should be zero half and one. This is zero half and zero. Okay. Console zero half and zero on an option. Okay, one second. Okay, now it's kind of working. 
Although for some reason the second option is not one. Okay, uh, let me just do this before. Take a look, see now, yep, now it's unique, good. Zero set question count, where the question ID is zero, hyphen one, option number one. Begin with option number zero. Now I should be able to click remove choice to remove a choice. That should be much more easier than I can just say document, okay, elements. D, name, and so I can remove. Okay, so I need to go out and get this and then remove both of the. No, I don't want to remove this, I just want to remove the elements. Alright, let's go ahead and say here, it's just going to be. Can I read property remove of no? I should be able to get it. Get elements zero. Yeah. Okay, I cannot remove this trace for some reason. Let's go trace, add an option. So it says cannot read property of no. Let me take a look. Zero have found to find again. Okay, so the first one. The first one now is always just zero. No dollar signs though. Let's take a look at one. Hold on one second, let's try refresh. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh god. Why did I create this for? Should probably forbidden that option if there's no question. So that's a bug as you can see. Let's take a look. Now you can see it's zero zero, so zero again symbolizes zero. Zero. Um, let's go ahead and click on remove choice. I would say. Ooh, now it's gone. Multiple choice, remove choice. Okay, you remove the entire thing again. Right, it, it it's supposed to not remove the entire thing. It's supposed to remove the option is only like two hyphen zero. And the only ID is that uh, is this. So it's basically should only remove this radio button, essentially. And it didn't do that for some reason. Let's see. So my goal is to just do to remove choice. So again, the goal is just to work on the UI UX, the front end. We see JavaScript. Remove choice. Let's 
this time, so I added quotation marks. Yay! So I added quotation marks. So now it kind of works. Alright, so you can see now I removed the radio button. So, I w so what I will do then next is kind of wrap them into a div again. So basically, remove them entirely. And, um, let's see, mm. how long have you been filming? Alright, I've been filming for quite a long time, so thank you for watching, if you're watching till now. Um, so again, let me just do a quick recap happening. So we just work on, you can add different options, you can remove these choices, you can delete the question entirely, stuff like that. And then we'll go keep finishing up the front end, which is JavaScript and HTML, in next video. Where And then the video after that, we'll talk about how can we actually like render these forms, display these forms, and store in that database mostly. So next gonna be Python focused again but thanks for watching this video if you like it please smash the like button and subscribe button as well if you haven't already and um, have a nice day and I will see you guys next in next video take care